In this lesson, we're going to be animating the smoke. Okay, so in between lessons, I added the roto paint and the roto notes that I said I would add, and I saved those in a new version. Um, but I also had saved before that for where we ended up and versioned that comp up, which you didn't see. So we still need to version up to the newest comp together here. So for me, that's going to be scan for versions. Um, right now it says I have zero new versions. So so let's just hit the V key and we can see all the versions that we've got. And it looks like we've got four versions here and we're on version three. So I want to use version four and that's what we should see here on the timeline now. So now let's double click that and we can see what we've got here in our node graph. Perfect. So you can see now our smoke is looking much better on the edges with this roto paint. We've got our transform in there. We also added, I just added a grade in between just so that this would have a little bit more of the orangey feel and less blue feel. Um, and then a roto node just to kind of cut out those buildings and added a few keys to account for a very slight amount of parallax with those buildings. So now to animate the smoke, I'm going to use a grid warp node and we'll do that together. That's going to go between, between our pre molt and our roto paint. So I'll hit the tab key key and um, actually rather I'm going to put it after the roto paint that's going to work a little bit better with the way that that masking is working so um, we'll add that grid warp and just pull that up and we can pop that right in between there okay so now we are ready to go so I'm just going to come back to frame 181 and We'll just kind of maybe move this a little bit if we want to kind of change it into place. And what that's going to do is kind of automatically set some keys for us. So I can kind of pull this over and you can see it's adding some keys for us. And then I'm just going to go to that last frame, one, uh, 271, uh, rather 270, there we go. And then we can definitely begin to make this feel like the smoke has really moved over time. And because we're able to use this grid warp, we can get a lot more realistic look than if we just went in and maybe scaled it up or transformed it. Using this grid warp allows us to have a way more realistic looking motion for this smoke over time. And because the smoke is so far away, using a grid warp to just subtly animate a still image gives you some surprisingly realistic results because the smoke really wouldn't just be billowing out really, really quickly when we are this far away from that image. Okay, so that looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and hit the play button so we can watch that grid warp work over time. Now to get this cache, it's going to take a few seconds. So I'm going to pause and we'll come back when that's done. Okay, so let's watch this render back for us. And overall, it looks pretty good on the right side, but the left side appears to have almost no movement. So we need to fix that. So I'm going to come back in here to frame 181 and let's just enable a few more of these little pieces here. Just kind of pulling that through. And now let's come back to our final frame. And this will just help this side of it to feel like it is also going to be moving along with the rest of them. Okay, so what we can do now is kind of the same thing. Let's just go ahead and hit play. We'll pause the recording and see if we get a better result from that little variation now. 
Okay, so I just went ahead and hit play for us after that finished caching. And you can see that now we get a really nice result completely over the entire top of our grid warp there. All of the smoke appears to be moving at a pretty nice rate. And because some areas move a little bit quickly or more slowly than others, we get a more realistic look of what it would look like if you had the turbulence of wind and a real environment involved in smoke like this. So you can play around with that a little bit more between lessons if you like. Um, and what we'll do next is come back and jump out to our sequence to render out this comp and we'll talk a little bit about rendering and getting those frames um, into position for us. So that's about it for this shot. What we'll want to make sure of is that we have anything re-enabled that we've disabled. So we'll come back in the next lesson and double check all those things. So stick around and we'll be jumping back to the sequence view and rendering this comp in the next lesson.